Hey there, my name is Uma. In this video, I'll be going over some adjustments I had to make when I started coding professionally, specifically things that were slightly different from what I learned and how I operated back in college. Let's jump into it. For those of you who are new here, welcome. As I stated earlier, my name is Uma. I've been coding professionally for about two years as a full-time software engineer, not counting internships and college experience. With those, it would be about six years, but this video focuses on my experience starting up as a full-time engineer straight out of college. The first thing I had to adjust to is how much you're expected to figure stuff out and problem solve most of the time by yourself. This was a pretty big shocker for me because while in college, I did a decent amount of internships where I worked on products and services that were out in production. Most of the skills I used during those internship experiences were skills that I already knew but wanted to develop and apply to real world experiences. The projects I worked on were already fully fleshed out in design and functionality. I was simply adding a component or fixing a bug on an existing system, probably something really small. When I started as a full-time engineer, the experience was a lot different. Rather than having tasks to do that were sub-problems of a more extensive system, I was given a problem statement and required to find or build a solution. This meant coming up with a design, figuring out the right stack for the project, and researching existing components that already exist that solve the problem rather than reinventing the wheel. If the solution involved a database, then I had to learn how to spin up the database, design the schema, and ensure it was secure because you don't want to get hacked and be the reason there's a big data breach. Sometimes I would find crisp documentation telling me exactly what I needed to do and how to do it, but more times than not, there was no documentation or the documentation was outdated, so I had to do some research by Googling, reading articles, or just plain trial and error. Yeah, you can ask senior engineers for help, but you don't want to go asking for help and have them Google the question you asked, and there's an article with your answer right in front of the two of you. That's something you could have done all by yourself. But at the same time, you don't want to wait too long researching a topic and being blocked by something that a five minute conversation with someone would have fixed four days ago. There's a balance to it. Figuring stuff out by doing a lot of Googling, reading documentation, articles, and doing research were skills that I had to improve when I first started working as a full-time developer, and they've definitely gotten better with time. The next thing I had to adjust to was getting used to the style of writing code and following specific standards. Prior to working full-time, whenever I wrote code for a personal project, school, or hackathon, the code usually ended up on GitHub, probably never to be used again because it was a one-time thing, just me messing around with some framework or learning something new. Once it worked, it worked. No going back to refine the code to make it a bit more readable. None of that. Because of this, the quality of the code wasn't the best. It was spaghetti code and variables were named horribly. Little to no methods at all. When I wrote methods, they were super long, with like 30 to 40 lines of code in one method, which isn't the best practice. It was just put together, so it worked. When I started working on my first project as an engineer and made my first pull request with code that was like that, it was a nightmare. There were comments in the pull requests regarding everything from naming variables with better names to grouping specific lines of code into functions and rewriting parts of the code to be more readable and take up fewer lines. It felt terrible, almost like I didn't know how to code. The code I wrote worked just fine. It did what it was intended to do and did it well. Part of me was upset about the whole situation until I realized that I probably wouldn't be the only one working on this project. Someone else may read the code and the easier I make it for them to understand the code, the faster they can work. I may also go back to the code in the future and the clearer I make it now, the easier it is for me to understand it. It also makes the code base for the project cleaner and easier to work with when there are standards and those standards are followed. Next thing I had to get used to is testing. Now, if we're being honest, testing is one of those things that everyone says they'll do, but by the end of the project, you figure, ah, if it works, it works. What's the worst that could happen? This was my mindset with most of my personal small projects. Prior to working full-time, the only testing I did was my freshman year in college when we were taught about J-Unit tests, and my final year in college when I took a software testing elective where I learned about the various forms of testing. I never actually wrote code to test anything, but I learned about automated tests, flaky tests, code coverage, and all of that. During my internships, I didn't do a lot of testing either because most of the code was already tested or there were test engineers whose sole purpose was to test people's code. When you're in the industry though, it's a whole different ballgame. The services you create are in production and the stakes are way higher. You don't want your code to be the reason a service goes down or why there's a major bug in the system that's causing it to crash, especially when the problem could have been avoided by writing proper test cases. 
This could be JUnit test, integration test, end-to-end -end test, automated test, UI test, and all the other tests that are out there. Like everything I've mentioned so far, these were all things that I had to learn, figuring out the proper testing framework and writing the best test cases to cover as many scenarios as possible because, let's face it, you can't cover all. Finally, we have documentation. Before working full-time, the only documentation I had done was in school. We were always told to create README files for our project so the TAs would know how to compile the code. I also wrote little documentation for some of my GitHub projects for people who needed them and for me whenever I went back to them. In the industry, it's different. I learned very fast that when you create a service that will be used by hundreds, possibly thousands of people, then you need crisp documentation, giving as much information as possible regarding the service. What it does, how to use it, and who to contact if it doesn't work or there's a bug with the system. In the beginning, I thought this was cut and clear. If I build a web app that converts CSV files to text files, then that's what it does. It's pretty straightforward but people will always have questions and it's best to have a documentation when they ask for it. For the source code itself, you just can't assume that others know the debugging and deployment process for the app. You need to create a documentation stating how to run it locally, the location of the secrets, how to deploy to the various environments, where the pipelines are and explain the multiple stages for the pipelines. This definitely helps other engineers and helps you as well because when you're working on several projects at once and you come back to one that you haven't worked on in a while, Having that document helps you come up to speed real fast. It quickly became part of my flow to have documentation as the final task for all of my projects, whether it be updating documentation or creating a new one. If that's not done, then the project or user story is not complete. That's it for this one. If you have any adjustments that you had to make when you started coding professionally, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you next time.